this and that and what the fuck else. Episode 97. And in this episode I'll be talking a bit about Medvedev, that guy who will can be glad he's not the president of Russia. And there's some stuff about protests in Europe, got a few racism pieces. And then I've got some stuff from the UK and the Ukraine and the US. And oh, what a fuck that you must not look at and just think about it and wonder. I'm going to start this one off with an art piece. And look at that image on one of the Telegram channels that I follow. Is a photographer from Russia and he's a landscape photographer. Look at that shot. Very well done. And I can actually feel the cold. It is a good shot. I'm not 100% with on the cropping. I would have done the crop a little bit different. But it is a very good landscape shot. Well done. Then we get to Medvedev. Now just look at that face. <laughs> Aggressive man this. Dmitry Medvedev explains everything very clearly for cockroaches and their owners. And this is his response to that missile that landed in Poland. The clumsy attempts to shift the blame for the bombardment of Poland to our country have not been accepted by anyone, not even the most inveterate Russophobe, the Poles. And this is an important symptom. Everyone is sick and tired of the Kiev regime, especially the neurotic Zelensky, who is constantly inflaming passions, whining, bawling and extorting more and more handouts in money and arms. He behaves like a hysterical child with development problems. This guy, he doesn't mince his words, that's for sure. He calls a spade a shovel. 2. The US, NATO and the EU do not want an eventual break with Russia, which is fraught with the risk of World War III. Hence, there are more and more attempts to coddle and talk sense into Kiev and, the, and push it out of negotiations. 3. Zelensky does not need negotiations for quite obvious petty reasons. Moreover, they are very dangerous for him. As we have already said, after all, if he does not recognize the reality of Ukraine's collapse, there is no point in sitting down at the table. But if he admits it, he will be killed by his own nationalists, who are in league with the army top brass, and whom he is frightened out of his wits. And there is a lot of truth in that statement. Zelensky is in a corner I'm glad I'm not there with him because that guy, his sell by date, is speeding up very fast. And then Medvedev was at the press conference and he said this. Sometimes you have to respond to the enemy's statements in more than just diplomatic or some allegorical terms. I answer. There are various cockroaches breeding in Kiev's insectarium, constantly threatening to return Crimea. The aims are clear to clear, to cheer up the tame insects around and to show the owner of the insectarium that they are still capable of running after a piece of food. It is almost like the favorite cockroach, Janissary, in the play on the run by the famous Kievanist Michael Bulgakov. So I want to remind them of the indisputable facts. Kiev is the capital of ancient Russia. So I want to remind him of the indisputable facts. Kiev is the capital of ancient Russia. 2. Kiev is a major little Russian city with the Russia, within the Russian Empire. 3. Kiev was the Republican capital as part of the USSR. And finally, Kiev is simply a Russian city where people have always thought and spoken in Russian. 
to be perfectly clear what and how should be rem uh, returned. And he does not mince his words. And uh, I see dark days for Zelensky. And then we go to Europe. Large-scale rallies took place in Vienna. The Vienna people took the streets to demonstrate their opposition to the government's actions. Protest demand, protesters demand the repeal of the suicidal sanctions that drive energy prices to astronomical heights. But I don't understand what is going on in Europe and what that EU cabal thought would be the end if they cut themselves off from their major energy supplier. And the reality is just simply this. Europe must import energy. They had a good deal with Russia for cheap energy and that deal was now trashed. So now they have to export from other places. They're getting from the US at 5 to 10 times the price and they must bring in from Qatar and India all third parties, most of them third party sales and the European citizens is paying for it. Stupid, I cannot understand. In Italy, numerous rallies against the war have taken place. Italians took this to the streets of the capital under the slogan Europe for peace. They demanded to stop pumping Ukraine with weapons and stop the war. But will the officials of those governments listen to the protesters? I don't know. Massive demonstrations in Athens. The Greeks marched to the US consulate under the slogan People don't want you. Down with NATO. In this way, they com commemorated the 49th anniversary of the polar uprising at the Polytechnic University. Popular uprising at the Polytechnic University. So it looks like the citizens are getting to a point where they are now really getting restless. And then we get to South Africa and to this fucking racist. At the EFF's Western Cape Provincial People's Assembly, Julius Malema said in response to the whites who resisted, you must never be scared to kill. A revolution demands that at some point there must be killing, because the killing is part of a revolutionary act. Violence will increase more and more long before anarchy. I can't understand why the South African government cannot get this guy under control. And then you have this. Blaming racism has acted as the perfect cover for black underperformance. So as over instances of racism have declined, claims of racism have got louder and new incarnations of racism have to be invented. The last thing many black people want to accept is that they are free. And there's a lot of truth in that, but once again, the guys that must hear these things do not hear. Or they don't want to hear. Then from Cabana Alfred, One racist person doesn't make all white people racist. If one racist person qualifies all white people to be racist, then our anus has become our thinking too. And he is putting it quite graphically. And we've got this image from Russia. Military enlistment office in Yakutia. Russians going to the army. And I included this because there are so many Western media reports on Russians that don't want to go to the army. And then we get to the UK. And this was tweeted by that uh, WEEF uh, governor of the UK. Britain knows what it means to fight for freedom. We are with you all the way. Now what shit is that? Britain's colonies know how to fight for freedom. Britain can't fight themselves out of a paper bag. And then you get this. Britain, the only country which imports its enemies, then calls you racist if you disagree with it. And that's the truth. And I'm seeing a lot of tweets lately where the English is beginning to get restless. I see the top three cities of England 
whites are no longer a majority. That doesn't spell a good future for England. And then we get to the Ukraine. Ukraine threatens a decade in prison for voting to join Russia. Deputy Prime Minister Irina Vereshuk revealed Ukrainian citizens could face up to a decade in prison for taking part in the referendums over joining Russia and face bans on working for up to 15 years. That is the democracy that those newcons in the shithouse are telling you that you must support with your tax dollars this type of shit. And then we get this tweet from Nick Sylvester. Ukraine is being liberated by Russia, not attacked. They are removing the Kazarian Mafia, the US Biological Weapons Labs and the Biden-Obama money laundering operations. My organization speaks to dozens of people currently living in Ukraine and they are so happy that the liberation has finally come. Do not listen to the media. All stories are lies. The enemy is in the gates, not in Russia. Clue in. That is an interesting tweet. Then this one. Ukraine's appetite for weapons is straining the Western stockpiles. I think everyone now is sufficiently worried, a NATO official said. NATO is now discussing how to support members if their stockpiles fall below the levels required to meet their defense obligations under the North Atlantic Treaty foreign policy. NATO has got problems. Europe has got problems. Europe has been basically effectively disarmed by Ukraine. And then we get to that Zelensky. Ukraine must be destroyed along with the fascist ideology of Ukrainians. Ukraine security for forces shot 39 pro-Russian activists in Kherson during punitive action. 74 people were taken to an unknown direction according to the emergency services. Once again, this is what the Ukraine government is doing and you are expected to support them. For Western weapons, the Ukraine war is a bitter test. Though the battle for Ukraine remains largely a grinding artillery war, new advances in technology and training there are being closely monitored for the ways they are starting to shape combat. For all the Ukrainians on the front line, the American New York Times ran a motivational article. The war in Ukraine is a bitter test for Western weapons. At first we even thought of writing about American cynicism, but it turns out the article quotes Ukrainian Deputy PM Michael Fedorov. Ukraine is the best proving ground as we have the opportunity to test all innovations in combat and come up with revolu revolu revolutionary changes in military technology and modern warfare. And a little further on there is this from Dalia Grabowskite. We are learning how to fight in Ukraine and learning how to use NATO equipment. And yes, this is a training ground. And after a pause, so the text says, she added, too bad the Ukrainians are paying with their lives for this training of ours. The Ukrainian soldiers must have thought that they were dying for independence. And now the American press and their own officials are explaining to them that they are as expendable as landfill. And that is the tragedy. And then you get this from the Ukraine. Ukraine Security Service raids Orthodox Monastery. Ukraine's domestic security agency, the SBU, has launched a raid targeting the country's main Orthodox Christian monastery, the Kiev Persers Lafra. Well, and this is what they say. A statement released by the SBU on Tuesday morning said an interagency raid was being conducted to prevent subversive activities of Russian special services. The goal was to prevent the use of the Lavra as a cell of the Russian world and to check claims that the monastery was being used to hide teams of saboteurs, foreign citizens, weapons, etc. The church has historic ties with Moscow, but has been de facto independent since 1990. Now, that's what you can say. That is what they do. First, they banned all opposition politicians. Then they banned news agencies and television stations and the radio stations that are not pro-government. Now they're doing this to the church. 
And you want to tell me that's a democracy? Huh. Let me get this. Zelensky just said Russia is using the cold weather as a weapon of mass destruction. Let me guess. He wants another 50 billion to fight the weather. Can you believe that idiocy? But there is a few Europeans that made the same type of statement. Russia is using winter as a weapon. What the fuck is that? And then further on the church stories. Draft law submitted to Verkovna Rada to ban Russian Orthodox Church in Ukraine. That news comes after the Ukraine's domestic security agency raided the country's main Orthodox Christian monastery. And then we get this from that foreign minister Kaluba. He said that Europe has no right to grow tired of Ukraine. Nor one would assume from Ukraine's unbelievable impudence, the West itself raised this monster, which is now trying to re regulate its own life and at the very expense of the West. And I like that sentence. Europe has no right to grow tired of Ukraine. And then we've got this cartoon, a train wreck. We're on the right track, not a joke. Biden is the engine. And then look at all those things crashed. Inflation, spending, student loans, abortion, fentanyl deaths, open border, crime, gas prices, taxes, woke. I agree, it is a train wreck. And then we get to this. And I just put it in so that you can laugh at what the hell is going on in America. Democrat re-elected by a landslide in Pennsylvania even though he is dead. How's that? And then this one took the cake when I saw this tweet. And me. Love it. So realistic. Should just really follow through. And it's a 911 operator. I see you voted to defund the police. Your 911 call is being routed to the Department of Peace and Unicorns. They will call you back in three to five business days. <laughs> now the next meme, listen to that. If the bullet doesn't come, if this bullshit does not come to a halt, you will see 83 million gun owners walk out of their homes like this. Now all I'm going to say is they've got actually big mouths. They are being fucked sideways by their government. There's bullshit stories about everything about their uh, election processes and uh, all sorts of really corrupt things that is happening and that money going to the Ukraine and all of that while the American citizens are suffering. Why don't they act? But they can put up memes like this. And then this one. This is Garland Nixon, and he made this satirical tweet. Secretary Blinken to do list. One, blow up Nord Stream pipeline. Two, overthrow Pakistan government. Three, try to rub out Imran Khan. And another three, more money for Azov Nazis. Four, Istanbul go boom. Five, personally strangle some Palestinians to death with your bare hands. And for that satirical tweet, Roland Nixon's account was permanently banned from Twitter. And then we get to that what a fuck moment. Look at that image. It's the Clintons. There's red lines on it. Look at the left, look at the right. You make the decision. You tell yourself or whoever you want to if it is the same people think about it. I have posted similar things like this. We are being bullshitted and I don't know how we're going to stop it. And on that note, please give me a like and a subscribe and share the thing. Thank you for your support.